All right, in this video, what we're going to talk about is another way to solve a system of equations. And the other way, which, you know, you can use, do this when you don't have a graphing calculator, is solving by, uh, by, by substitution. So the first thing you need to kind of know is what is meant by substitution. Substitution means to fill in for, okay? So substitution means, like, wherever you see the letter Y, they'll give you something that you can plug in for, and then you just plug it in. So um, using this one, it says, uh, it's another way to do uh, solving a system. So uh, this one right here, it says, uh, what's the solution to this? What is the solution of the system? U substitution. Now here you have a few things. You have y equals 3x. Since you have y equals 3x, that means wherever I see the letter y, I'm going to put whatever comes after the equal sign. So I see an x plus a y. So I'm going to write this as x plus 3x equals negative 32. And so now I have 3x plus 1x is a 4x, and that's equal to a negative 32. So then I'm going to divide both sides by 4. So now I get x equals negative 8. So now I have negative 8 for x. But remember, a solution is an intersection where the two lines meet. So I'm going to take this negative 8 and I'm going to plug it in anywhere I want. For me, I would put it in, um, I would put it in right over here in the, uh, I would put it in the, um, y equals 3x spot. Okay, I'd put it in the y equals 3x. So y equals 3 times negative 8. So y equals negative 24. So my intersection where these two system or two conditions meet, these two lines, is at negative 8, comma negative 24. Okay? When you're looking at your um your problem that you have, your got it. It doesn't make a difference where you have it. So you just set this up. You just go, okay, y is 2x plus 7. All right, I see the letter y. I'm going to write 2x plus 7, and that equals x minus 1. So then you can solve it from there. What I would do here is I'd bring this x over. So now I got x plus 7 equals negative 1. I subtract 7, I subtract 7, I get x is negative 8. I can take this and I can plug it into either one of those two uh, equations. I'm going to plug it into the bottom one. y equals negative 8 minus 1. So y is negative 9. So these guys cross at negative 8 comma negative 9. Now you could have plugged these into your calculator if you wanted to. Would have done the same thing. All right. Looking at this one. This one's a little different because you don't have it in y equals mx plus b. So what you got to do is you have to figure out what variable would be the easiest to solve for and what condition would I use. When I'm looking at this, this one right here, eh, that one looks kind of nasty, but this guy, I can easily solve this for the letter Y. I'm going to add 2X. Now I have Y equals 2X minus 3. I'm going to take that and plug it in. Whoa, sorry about that. I'm going to take that and I'm going to actually plug in um, the y equals 2x minus 3 in for the letter y anywhere in that first condition. So I have three parentheses. There's the letter y. So 2x minus 3 plus 4x equals 14. So with this, I'm going to distribute the 3. So I get 6x minus 9 plus 4x and that equals 14. So then I combine my 6x and my 4x, making it 10x minus 9 equals 14. Then I add 9 to both sides. So 14 plus 9, I believe, is 23. So I have 10x equals 23. So x is 23 over 10. Okay. Or I could write this as 2.3. Either one. Now that I have that, I can go back and I can plug this in anywhere I want. I can even plug it in right here. I'm going to plug it in there. Y equals 2 times 2.3 minus 3. So that's 4.6 minus 3. So Y is 1.6. So our intersection is at 2.3 comma 1.6. They can get really screwy there sometimes with their intersections, but it's the same thing. All right. On your got it. It's the same thing. You can decide what you want to do. Here, I would probably say to solve for the letter X. It might be easier because all you got to do is subtract that that 3Y. It's no big deal. Okay? 
Now let's look at where we have an application of this. We have an application that says a snack bar sells two sizes of snack packs. A large snack pack is five bucks, a small snack pack is three bucks. In one day, the snack bar sold 60 snack packs for a total of 220 bucks. How much, how many small snack packs did the snack bar sell? So when you're doing this, this is kind of tricky, but I do know I'm selling a big snack pack and a small snack pack. So I'm going to say X is the big, or is the small snack pack, and Y is the big snack pack, right? And I know that between the big plus the small, I sold 60 of them. And I know that the uh, the the small snack pack is three bucks, and the big snack pack is five bucks. And I made $220. So how, what am I going to do here? I'm going to solve this for y. So if I solve this top one for y, I subtract x. So I have y equals negative x plus 60. Right? So I'm going to plug that y in for, uh, or plug that expression in for y. So I got 3x plus 5 times negative x plus 60. And that equals $220. So then I distribute that 5, so I get negative 5x plus 300 equals 220. When I combine these guys together, I get a, a negative 2x plus 300 equals 220. Now I subtract 300. So I get negative 2x equals negative 80, and then I divide by negative 2, so x is 40. So I can take this 40 and I can plug it in. Well, how many more snack packs do I need to make 60? That would be Y is 60. So to answer the question, it said, how many small snack packs? Well, we sold 40 small snack packs and 60 large snack packs, okay? So when you're working on your, uh, your got it, you pay $22 to rent six video games. The store charges $4 for new video games and $2 for older video games. You should probably let X be new games, and why be old games? And then you could probably take it from there, okay? So I don't think you have too many problems with this. I'll see you soon. Um, and may the force be with you.